When you say Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad by Ne'ila, the Jewish people wait the whole year to get to that Shema Yisrael. That Shema, when everyone's screaming out, that is the spitz, the pinnacle. Kol Nidre, those psukim of Kol Nidre. O Zawalat Sadiq, Uli Yishrei Lei V'simichon. The whole year you're waiting for these moments. So the Sfarim say, what is the moment of Shavuos? What's the moment? What's the mitzvah of the day? What's that spitz of Shavuos? So really the spitz of Shavuos is this tefillah, Avarabba. Avarabba, the tefillah we say before you say Shema, that is the spitz. There were certain places the Rav Shetzer spent about two hours on Avarabba. Mamish. Made his whole davening on Shavuos was about 12 hours. Who? The Rav That's the true Rup davening. What about the next davening? Yeah, no, they, they got to it all. They got to it all. I mean, the whole, you know, Shach is Musaf, in all, in, in all uh, uh, fairness. And many of the tzaddikim davened the entire day, nonstop. And one year in Rapshitz, they spent six hours in Vayivarach David. Just the, his oiris and his ragshus. It says the Rapshitzer would not, he davened with a lot of like Pasha de Yidin. It was a big thing in Rapshitz, just to have Pasha de Yidin around for davening. In the Amcha Beis Yisrael, there was a lot of people with Ruch HaKadosh there, but there was a lot of just very, very posh of the people, and the Rav Shetzer would not continue and finish Avarabah, what we're learning, what we've been learning the last few weeks together, would not finish this tefillah until every single person there had an out-of-body experience. It's called Hispashtus Hagashmias. Rabbi Dabber will teach you all about it. And everybody did tshuva shlema mi'ava. Full tshuva shlema from ava. Love, love. This whole tefillah is about love. And this ragshus that you can have is, is very, very powerful. So we've been going through it. And this is the tefillah that we daven for Torah. You know, you have to daven for Torah. It's not enough to learn Torah, you have to daven for Torah. <coughs> I heard a very nice pshat that when Klal Yisrael, when we were going to Har Sinai, so there was one thing that stopped us on the way. Do you remember what it was? We encamped in Rafidim. What happened in Rafidim? Malik. Well, first, Rafi Yedeim and Atayra, that our hands got weak from learning. And as soon as we became weak in our learning, Vayavoy Amalek. So Amalek comes. So the Achreinim point out, Simar points this out, he said, it's a very interesting thing. Rafu Yedei Menatayra. Think about Chazal. Our hands became weak from learning. So he said, we don't usually connect hands to learning. Even though, yes, you know, kolatz moisai toimarna. But we're not usually misyat. Learning is in our mind. Learning is in our heart. We're not misyaches learning to the hands, bedafka. To say, Rafu Yedei Rafu Yamoyach, Rafu Yalev Menatayra. Why Rafu Yedei Menatayra? So he said that there is something that we're misiyaches almost entirely to the hands. Davening. The languages of davening, the Pyrus Yodayu, that Klaus will spread their hands, but Sloisan, many, many languages in Chazal of our hands being spread forth, but feel us with the hands. The whole of davening is the hands. So he says, Rafu Yedei Menat Torah, when did we become weak that Amalek came? Not that we weren't learning Torah, we weren't davening for Torah. This that we weren't davening for our Torah, we weren't yearning for Torah. Vayovoy Amalek. That's the Pesach that Amalek comes because of Rafu Yedei Menat Torah. And we know that the entire destruction, Hashem Yirachim, of Beis Amikdosh, it didn't make a bracha on the Torah Tchila. So you know there's three tefillahs that are like Birkas HaTorah. Birkas HaTorah. Ava Rab and Ava Zoylam. These are Birkas HaTorah. If you didn't say Birkas HaTorah in the morning, and then you dab in Shachris, and you said Ava Zoylam, do you repeat Birkas HaTorah? 
No, you were Yoytzi B'Dyevid. So we weren't saying this tefillah with Kavana. Rafu Yedeim and our we weren't davening for our Torah. This is Ava Soylem. So let's go a little bit weiter in this tefillah. So we said to Hashem, V'yachid levaveinu li'ava li'iris shemecha. Yachid levaveinu, Hashem, we want the Torah, but we want it as one. Ke'ish echad belev echad. And we want to know your shame. So we said we talk about the shame a little bit. What does it mean that somebody has a name? What is God's name all about? God has a name. What do you say? What are names? Is the name the person? Essence. It's meant for other people. It's meant for other people. It's your calling card. The name is a, a way that I can relate. I can relate. So when we come to Hashem though, Hashem says, I want to relate to you. I want to relate to creation. You know, Hashem has a lot of names. A lot of names. All the names of Hashem are ways that He relates to us. The ways that Hashem is relating, that we could feel His presence in our life. That we could feel that He's with us. He's never abandoning us. That's what it means, God's names. And we say that in the end of days, by Yoimahu, Ye Hashem Echad, Ushmai Echad, that his, him and his name are going to be one. But, like, what are we missing? He's not one. His shame's not one. It means we don't see the way that Hashem relating to us that Hashem is one. We see there's a lot of other stuff going on. There's a lot of other distractions going on. We don't see that the only thing in the world that we should be chasing is Hashem. Anybody wake up this morning and just scream out, Hashem? I love you, and the whole day I'm just going to run after you. Anybody have that? Is that what your Modani looked like? Or was it like... Modani. Was I leaving you? I said it. I don't know. <laughs> waking up in the old cities. Baruch Hashem, keep that. Keep that fire. Keep that fire. How could it be? You woke up, and you're here in Yushalayim, and the person's not screaming to run after Torah and mitzvahs, that's all because we're not connected to shame Hashem. That we don't see that Hashem is in love with us, is with us, is relating to us in this world. That's why when people want to learn Kabbalah, one of the things they start learning is the shameless. They start learning the names. The shameless of Hashem. Because the shameless of Hashem teach you how Hashem is relating to you in a very intimate way. So we're telling Hashem, please, we want to have la'ava uliyira es shemecha. We want to have love for your shame. We want to feel that love that you're running after us and we're running after you. But you know what happens when you run after the Lord? Uliyira. There gets to be a little bit of a pachad also. And we're just going back and forth. Ratzel v'shayv. Laman loy nevoish. And why do we want all this? So we mentioned last time that if a person lives a life and he never connected to the shame of Hashem and without Torah and Hashem Yirachim, what's going to happen after 120 years? What do you say? Do you know that we have books? We have books on the shelves that talk about what happens to a person after 120 years? Details? It's important. To know, there's a whole s cycle of what happens. He's going to get asked, would you, would you do to uh, be close to God? He's going to say, okay. So that's one of the first things. They say, so, were you anticipating the, the redemption? He's going to say he was too busy. So, so, so Shem's going to say, yeah. Like, with what? So in, over there, though, in that world, everything is clear. It's called the Oil of Everything is clear. So there's no falsehood up there. So it seems that it's not even like you're going to be able to try to lie. You're going to try to lie, and Hashem's going to say, you know, that, you know come on. Yeah. It's you can't, there's no lies up there. Like, there's not even a lie that could take form. It's just you see emmas, pure emmas. And anybody that spent their life down here in this world of Sheker, chasing after emmas, earned that emmas, is going to shine with that emmas in that place. And yes, of course, everyone's going to have their tikkun and everything's going to work out in the end. And these are complex things. 
But from our perspective down here, we're running after God. We want to run after you, Hashem. Ki v'shem kod shecha ha-godl ha-gibor ve'anoira botach me. Because you know what? Back to your name, Hashem. Your name is... The word holy seems like holy and hard to relate to. <coughs> There's such a thing called... You know what holiness means? When somebody gets married, do we call that holy? Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully, that's a good answer. The, the very name Rabbi Dober just said, for marriage is holy. Kiddushin. Hare at... What are you telling this woman when you want to marry her? Anybody know the translation? Hare at, behold, you. Mekudeshesli. You're holy unto me. So Taisa says, and really the Gemara is explaining this is what it means. Holy means that you're also the Kuliyama Kehektish. That means, as soon as you get married to somebody, what you're basically saying is that person is off bounds to the rest of the world. Now, what does that mean, off bounds? It means that you're entering into a relationship that's now sacred. And you're really telling this lady, because you really think she's awesome, and, and everything else that you would tell somebody, maybe Geschmack is a nice, you know, Geschmack a girl, very nice girl. You see that she has all the qualities of a good, of a good wife, and you like her, and you're really saying that I want this relationship to be exclusive. I want it just to be for for you and I. The word for kadosh means hektish, means it's it's exclusive. The Yehuda hakoyim. So when something is hektish, let's say, give me an example of something hektish in the base of hektish. Offering. So an, an offering, thank you, though, surrounded by Kohanim here. Everything. Basically everything. So, Kodesh HaKadosh. So let, let's go with a, a Mincha offering, you know? So you want like this muffin, this Mincha muffin. So uh, you can't have that. You can't, you're hungry. You just, you know, you're strolling into the Beis HaMikdash, and you see that uh, they're bringing up a Mincha, and it's not, you can't just go and take that Mincha. What about <laughs> somebody offers up a violin. They have this antique vintage violin and they bring the violin and they, they dedicate it to the base of Mikdash. You know you could do that? It's great. It's expensive. It's expensive violin. The base of Mikdash could use it for all the Levim. And you are Makdash the violin to the base of Mikdash. It belongs to the base of Mikdash. If you now go into the base of Mikdash, can you go and grab that violin and just like, you know, rip like some Jimi Hendrix on there? No. Uh, why not? It's not yours. What do you mean? But it was there. The answer is, is it's reserved for Beis HaMikdash. <coughs> it's hektish. It's reserved. So, so too, when you get married to somebody, what you're doing is you're saying, it's very important, we don't believe, you don't buy a person. There's no buying of a wife. Not buying her. But you're acquiring a relationship. You're saying that I want to have exclusivity, that this is going to be sacred. This is sacred. And you make a sacred space. I want to point something out. A lot of the world has a hard time with this concept of sacred space. Because, like, why not? Like, why do you have to be so exclusive? Anybody here believe that having walls on a house is a good idea? Yeah. You're into that? Walls on the house? Why are you so exclusive? Why don't you let me in? Well, what do you mean? Are you t putting walls on your house? It's great. You're, you're shutting people out. You're so, you know, bigoted. You're so bigoted. Though. You're better than them that they can't come in the house? They have their house as well. Maybe they, but maybe they want yours. Like, why are you shutting them out? Well, it's not that. It's mine. It's my house. It's actually house. Private property. So, do, can we appreciate that everything's okay if you have walls on a house? Like, that's okay? You guys feeling okay with that? Walls in a house? Yeah. You could dig it? It's not bigoted. It's not like exclusive. It's not saying that I'm better. It's not racist. It's saying that there's a space which is sacred and that that's okay. That's okay. 
And it's, it's important that there's a sacred space that you could go. And not everyone's invited to certain, even in a person's house. Do you think everybody should be able to go into all the rooms in the house? No. In the Torah, the Torah speaks about the, the cheder hayrim, the room of the parents, shir shir. But there's certain things that you know you would never go into that. Even if you go to visit somebody's house, even within the house, there's areas that are off limits. There's certain things that are the Torah describes cheder lifnim cheder. There's rooms upon rooms upon rooms that you could go and journey in Hashem's Torah, and not everybody gets to go into all the places. There's certain things that are off limits, that are, that are special. And because you make it special, you build something for real. The Rosh Shiva loves telling this joke. It's not, I don't know if it's a joke or it's just a sad observation of life. So there was, there was this hippie boyfriend and hippie girlfriend, and they were together. And so the hippie boy, girlfriend says to the, to the guy, she says, you know, do you love me? And he says, of course I do. I love everybody. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Good, sad, right? Special. And she's like, but it's a nice answer, right? I love everybody. You're included in that. You're included in that. What do you say about that? You like that? It's terrible. You can argue with me. You could say, yeah, it's a great answer. Anybody think it's a great answer? Don't be shy. It is, but... Oh, say it, speak it out. Special for her. So it's, it's, it is a good answer? It's, it's good, but it's not appropriate, appropriate for her. Yeah. So maybe she's just got the wrong idea of a relationship. Maybe she's not as hippie as he is. Anybody... <laughs> 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 Is she wrong? Then maybe she's wrong. Is he wrong? Who's, wh what's going on here? Why are we touched by something here that we kind of feel for her like she's getting the short end of the straw? And I'm happy if anybody wants to argue on this. I'm happy if anybody around the world wants to argue this point. That, 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 that the woman in this story would be very happy with that answer. I'm happy for anybody to challenge that. Is she serious? In this and world. Sephardic, yeah. Pardon? Is she Sephardic? That's the best she can get. What? <laughs> that answer? <laughs> Why? Because? Because Sephardic people have four wives. Some Yemenites have four wives, so that's, that's a good answer for her. But it's not everybody. Not everybody, but some people. Maybe the hippies from Yemen. He loves her as much as his other wives. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you know, what, you know what in Jewish law co wives are called? Saras. Sarot? Sarot. Pain. Each other's wow. pains. You think it was simple? It wasn't very, it wasn't simple. No, 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 that's King Saras. <laughs> and it got, and it, and it wasn't simple towards the end. He said that it was very, it was a challenge towards the end. <laughs> so a lot of people that, King Solomon, you're like, well, you're okay, Rabbi, you know. So, so what you tell the guy, start with one. You know, let's see how it goes. And let's see how well you. Ezu Gibor, a Koyush as Yitzray. Gibor is not the guy with the muscles. Gibor is the guy that can wake up in the middle of the night and you know, give the baby a, you know, with the teething baby. It's a much different thing. So, why is this woman? And if people want to challenge it, I'm happy to hear that. Then I think that this, this lady is saying that I don't feel settled with that answer because I want this relationship to have something exclusive. I want, to, I want to have something special with you, special. I want to be able to have our own room, our own home. Because why don't you just say, where are we going to live? We'll live in the park. You know where we're going to live? We're going to live in a park. All of us together. Everybody together. We're just all going to live together. It sounds lovely. It's a park. <laughs> Who doesn't like parks? But you realize that you leave the park at a certain point you go to your home and you go into a place that has borders and you say that it's okay that there's certain things that are kadosh here's the word kadosh 
So we're talking about Hashem. We're saying Hashem, that you're Kodesh. And here's the final takeaway. When we're talking about Hashem, that you're Kodesh, and all the other things about your name, one of the things about your name is Hashem says, I want to have exclusivity with you. Shem Kod Shecha, that the way that I relate to you is exclusive. I want to relate to you, yeah, just you. In a very intimate way. Completely. Shem Kod Shecha, exclusive. And that every single one of us can have a relationship like Hashem is only with us. And that every single one of us has to say, Bishvili Nivra Oilam, that the whole world is worth it just for me. Hashem says it's all worth it just for you. Just for you. And Hashem is thinking about you. He's looking at you. So we're going to continue in this tefillah tomorrow. Bizarat Hashem is marching. All of this is the mind frame we're taking in Kabbalah Sotero, Shabbat Zerat, Mashiach, Zerat, Mashiach, Zerat, Mashiach, Zerat, Mashiach, Zerat, Mashiach, Zerat, Mashiach, Zerat, Mash